Today I'm going to talk to you more about the organization that I created, which is Bounce Be Transformed, um, a few years ago. And this time I'm going to talk about core needs and core emotions. Because every human being on Earth has the same core needs and core feelings. And what those are, we can use Maslow's hierarchy of needs because we all have the same. We all need safety and security. We need air and water and so forth. Safety and security. We need a sense of stability and consistency. We need to belong. We need to be connected to other people. We need to feel loved. We need to feel cared for, that someone will go further for us. And we need self-esteem, which is recognition, appreciation, and respect. And we need altruism, which is going beyond ourselves for the well-being of others. But I'm not going to talk as much about that today as I am core emotions. Because our core emotions are survival emotions. And these are what are tied to our steroids and endorphins that I talked about last time. So we have four core emotions. Fear, anger, disgust, sadness, and joy. Now these are survival mechanisms. Obviously if we're in our little hut and the mammoth is coming along, we're going to have fear and we're going to run. So we're going to get a big hit of steroids so that we can get out. We need anger. If somebody's raiding the cave, we need to be able to get mad and have the energy to fight. So we have anger for survival. We also have disgust. Looks yucky, smells yucky, don't eat it. Disgust keeps us from doing things and eating things that can hurt us. Four is sadness. We have loss, we have disappointment, we, have, we need that for survival because sadness is a cleansing emotion. But it also has steroids. So that's four of our emotions that give us steroids. There's only one that gives us joy. <laughs> There's only one that gives us endorphins, and that's joy. So four out of five give us tension, they give us stress, and what steroids do is they pump us up, they give us that extra oomph, they give it the adrenalines produce more adrenaline. All of the steroid levels go up. We have road rage, we have fights, we have all kinds of violence that comes from those steroids, from those first four emotions. It's part of everyday life. How often do you yell at your kids because you're angry? How often do you mope around because you're thinking of something bad that's happened? I can give you an example of you can change your thinking and it changes what happens. So my husband and I were actually on a kayaking trip, and I hadn't been kayaking before. I love the water, but I don't like so much to be in it. But it was no problem up there because in Prince William Sound, it's glacial, so if you get in the water, you die in a matter of a couple of seconds, and it's over. So I hadn't been kayaking, but he had us go way out to this remote area uh, where we camped, and we didn't see another person for a whole week. And it came time to leave. Now, my husband's a surgeon. So, you know, he's pretty smart, he's pretty organized, and he's a pilot, he's very talented. So, he's, we pack up all our stuff, and we're pretty sick of the freeze-dried food. So, we decide to bury that. So, we get our stuff in our canoe, and we go, we're all ready, but the guy's not here to pick us up yet. So, my husband says, why don't we just paddle out and meet him? Because there's a channel here that he has to go through, and surely he'll see us. And I'm thinking, okay, well... You know, okay. So we paddle on out there, and we come across a pot of whales that are, you know, just swimming around us. And absolutely incredible. They at least had the good sense not to tip us over. And so we keep paddling. Well, pretty soon we see our ride coming. And okay, here we are. Well, boom! He goes right by us. So I'm thinking, it wasn't so good. But he'll be coming back, and now he'll be looking for us. So pretty soon, here he came. Didn't slow down. Now I'm thinking, this isn't so good. So we paddle into shore. We've got flares. So we shoot off a few flares as we see them coming. 
Two of the flares were duds, but we had two more. So we figured he's coming back. So now we light a fire. Smoke, flares, the guy will see us, right? There he goes. So now we realize we're going to be camping here tonight. Now remember that food that we didn't want any more of? That was gone. We had some candy, though. So we had our little sack of candy. We are just kind of snuggling in for the night. Then you hear this noise outside, this rumbling around, and I'm thinking, this is not good. So we throw the candy out of the tent, and sure enough, it's gone in the morning. So the next day, we kind of paddle on, watching for our guy. Here he comes. There he goes. But we're paddling down south, and I am by this time getting a little upset. And I am thinking, how could he be so stupid? How could I have been so dumb? Then I'm thinking, I don't want to be in that water. If I get upset, our chances go down. So I start deciding this is pretty funny. For two reasonably intelligent people, we're out here in the middle of nowhere thinking this guy's going to see this tiny little yellow kayak. So I start making jokes. We are laughing our head off. We get to paddling. He paddles much better now that I'm laughing. And by the end of the day, we were down where there were some other people. They radioed in, and they came and got us. Now, that was a steroid endorphin choice. If I had chosen to get more mad, we wouldn't have paddled so well. We wouldn't have been laughing. The chances of us tipping over were way greater. And so it was a choice. And both were real. I mean, the place was beautiful. It was scary, but it was beautiful. So if I looked at how beautiful it was and told my husband how skilled he was and, you know, that he's so good at paddling because by now I was getting more than a little tired of it, you know, we, it, it's one of the best memories of our lives. I mean, we think it's hilarious. And we even got upgraded to first class by Alaska Airlines because we were two days late for our flight and I think we looked like we were a little stressed. So the whole story ended really well because I intentionally chose for this to be an endorphin experience not a steroid experience. And we choose that every day. We choose to think, oh, I'm late for work and I forgot to get gas. Oh, gosh, I know. What am I going to do? Well, if my husband didn't leave everything up to me, he could at least take care of my car. He never does anything around the house. Pretty soon, we're mad at the car, we're late for work, we're mad at the husband, and we're all wrapped up. We're likely to make more mistakes. Or we can just say, oh, well. Car needs a little more gas. I guess I'll be a few minutes late. No big deal. I'll call and let him know. It's, it's all in your mind. It's all what you choose to say. And your needs are for joy and meaning in your life. And good relationships is all going to come together when you choose endorphins. In our next segment, I'm going to talk to you about what it means to be your best. When you have enough endorphins in your system and you have a way of transforming yourself, we had to figure out what does it mean to be your best. So next time I'll talk to you about what it means to be your best self on Chat with Women.